Today we're looking at chapter two of Rambles Beyond Railways by Wilkie Collins. This chapter is set in Loo and it's called a Cornish Fishing Town. The chapter opens with Wilkie Collins lying under a fir tree and lamenting about what a walking holiday means to him. He says to stop blisters, you should soak your feet in vinegar and cold water and change your socks every ten miles. He talks about using the earliest of conveyances, your own legs. The timetable to the walker is but waste paper. He says walking, you are in no, no one's power and no one has power over you. If you're hesitant or uncertain, you can change your mind a dozen times in a dozen hours. If you are a person anxious about your health or in poor health, walk to make yourself healthy in the fresh air. I want to take the cheeses out on the summer breezes. Wilkie Collins walked along the long, narrow streets of Loo until he got to the Ship Inn, where he went in and found the kindest of landladies and the fairest of chambermaids. Well, we're here in the Ship Inn where um, Wilkie Collins stayed here in Branding. He only intended to stay one night, but stayed on for three days because the food was so good and enjoyable. We're here, we just ordered a tuna mayonnaise sandwich and a baguette. Um, but it's mostly uh, scampi and chips. I don't think it would be in the menu that um, Collins was enjoying. One thing hasn't changed though. The beer is still pretty good. When Collins came to Lou, the population was 1,400 people. I think it's about uh, 6,000 now. So it's greatly grown. He said that they were good-humoured, unsophisticated people. The main employment in, in, in Lou was fishing and the women took the fair share of the heavy work. They would laugh and scream and bump into each other, but Collins couldn't understand for some reason that worked. The men would just paint their boats, row their boats, or do whatever with their boats, and even if they didn't have anything to do, they would just put their hand in their pocket and just look at their boats. Such was their love of boats. The only thing, strange thing that he said is that he said that children, although they were children's size, that was where it ended. He said they used to huddle together and have a strange language on their own. And he said if they did any childish games, like leapfrog, etc., no one ever saw it. On his first night in Lou, Collins went to bed and said that he had a good omen about what was to come ahead. In the morning, Collins and Brandon walked to the old bridge to walk across it. As you can see, it's no longer here. But in fact, he said it was most picturesque. The bridge was how many feet long, Collins? 364. Thank you. And it had 14 arches, and they were all different, different styles, he said. It must have been amazing to see. I'm trying not to cause offence, everything I say. He was amazed by the shopkeepers of Lou. He said they were jack of all trades and they would sell anything. They combined drug mongering with cheese mongering, stationery, grosses, wrinkled apples, dusty nuts, cracked slate pencils, gingerbreads, shirt studs, white hats for Sunday wear and at two and nine pence apiece. Let no man rashly say that he has seen all that British enterprise can do for the extension of British commerce until he has carefully studied the shop front of the tradesmen of Loo. Collins wrote that it was a gentle, soft atmosphere in Loo. He says that everywhere there was fuchsias and hydrangeas, even in the most poorest people's gardens. There was no such thing as a straight street in Loo. Each house would have two, maybe three doors going into different, different streets. He said there was no better place to have a game of hide and seek. When Collins came down to the beach on his last day in Lou, there was a bazaar here because there was a boat race on and exciting things were happening. The sun was shining and all the women came out of their house. 
up and down to the beach like butterflies. The beach was a mass of dazzling gowns, excitement, flaring parasols, and above all, a great deal of importance. Of course, now the end of summer festival is a rock concert they have on the beach where they have the darkness and the stranglers. I wonder what Collins would have thought of that. But as the gun fired for the first race, the, the clouds started to mass and the rain poured down and that was it for the day. As the rain started to fall, Collins and everyone on the beach ran quickly to a little tea room on the side where they all crushed in. There was a little German umpire band that was playing on the beach and they couldn't get into the tea room so they just stood in the rain and continued playing much to the amusement of Collins and Branding. It was still raining but the tea room was so busy that Collins and Branding decided to leave. They walked westward up to the cliffs. I'd like to see trumpets, a little tea and crumpets When Collins arrived at this cliff, the rain had stopped and it was getting to sunset. He said the sky was a coppery red colour. In the book, Colin tells a story about the rats of Lou. Once there was a shipwreck. The ship wrecked and the sailors swam to Lou, Lou Island, but so did all the rats that had taken a free passage on the boat. Soon they grew in numbers and were such a problem they were swimming across to Lou and messing up the agriculture and pinching things and something needed to be done. So, the answer was they took loads of barrels of onions over to the island and caught the rats, skinned them and dumped them in the onions. They took them back, laid them out on china plates and every man, woman and child ate the rats until they were gone. It was not about killing the rats, it was about annihilating them. They looked on Lou Island and when they did, they saw the flashing light of Edison's lighthouse in the distance. They had stayed on longer at Lou than they thought, mostly due to the hostess's good cooking at the pub and also the, the smiles of the chambermaid. As the light faded, Brandon and Collins made their way back to the ship inn for their last night in Lou before moving on to Liscard the next day. Well that ends chapter two, a Cornish fishing town. And I'm going to be leaving my walking with Wilkie card. Breaking out the ginger ale and pimps for you and me. Take a wicket, just not cricket, sixes in the tree. Seven cones of ice cream, take a boat and sail a sail.